Hey there, welcome to Farmcraft. I'm John, and this beast behind me is my boom lift. Now, I bought this thing, I've done a lot of work on it. I've worked on the engine, I've worked on the hydraulics, I've worked on the controls, the electric, but I'm about to take on the most intimidating repair job I've ever done. I'm gonna tear that boom apart. That's a three section boom. I'm gonna take it all the way down. I'm gonna take the huge hydraulic cylinder in there out and I'm gonna rebuild that. I need to inspect it. I need to make sure the chains inside are okay. We're gonna look at how all that works. I'm gonna rebuild that cylinder, then we're gonna put it all back together. And I'm gonna to try to do this by myself. Now, I may need some help on this, I don't know. I've just never dealt with anything this big. This would be really nice to have one of those shops with a bridge crane and plenty of space, but you know, even though I have a really awesome shop, it's nowhere near big enough for this job. So I'm up here at a different section of my farm where I've got a big flat open area so I can get to both sides of this with machinery. And we're gonna tear this thing apart, I hope. So let me show you the plan. So here's the boom, obviously, and it pivots on that giant pin right there. That is the base boom, the piece that you can see. We'll look at the others in just a second. That is gonna stay put. The hydraulic cylinder is gonna come out that way and it's very long, it's very heavy. So I'm gonna be using my excavator and my tractor to help me take this apart. So let's go to the other end of the boom. Here you can see the three sections. So this is the base boom. This is staying on the machine. This is the mid boom, and this smallest one is called the fly boom. Well, the mid and fly booms are coming out. Once I disassemble the chains and everything, I'm gonna slide this piece out of the base boom. Uh, and that's gonna be interesting. <laughs> That's a pretty pretty heavy long thing in there that I need to pull out of there and support and uh, I hope my machine, machines are going to be up to it. Now before I do all that, obviously I need to disconnect everything. Right now I'm connected right here between the fly boom and the base boom. This piece is going to stay on the base boom so I need to unbolt that. All these connections here I need to undo. Now these are all electrical it would be a nightmare to unwire everything and then rewire it. So I'm not gonna do that. I'm gonna take this control box off and I'm going to secure it to the base boom and it can just stay put. Disconnect everything from this. So I've got two hydraulic lines here that need to come off, some hydraulic lines here that need to come off. So that's gonna be my first step is getting the control box off, getting these lines unhooked, getting everything attached to the base boom. So let's get to work. So this is the hydraulic motor that drives that gear there to rotate the platform. Now the other two hydraulic lines are for the tilt of the platform and it's pushing that cylinder right there and that rod which goes to a pin right there. That is actually being pushed by gravity now that platform would like to, to pivot down on, in the, on this. So when I undo that hydraulic line, this thing's gonna wanna fall. So I am gonna stick a bar in there so that when it tries to fall, it's gonna get wedged in and, uh, and it won't. All right, there you can see why I don't want to unwire this thing. All of these wires would have to be undone and then redone. It's much easier to just take the box off.
hoping that would break off. There's just a bolt that goes down through and bolts the, the bottom of this tube right here to this, which is welded to the fly boom. I think I'm gonna have to cut that. Those things are easier to replace than to try to get them out whole. All right, the only connection I have left are these two hydraulic lines. I'm gonna have to uh, disconnect those from underneath. So let me attach this and then we're gonna raise the boom. Okay, here's the deal. This bar is now supporting it. So when the basket tries to come down, it pivots and hits on that bar. So the basket cannot fall, but I'm gonna be reaching up inside there and man, if it did for any reason, that would be horrible. I'm gonna come up underneath this basket with the tractor just to back it up. I don't want any surprises. A viewer sent me these wrenches. That's gonna come in handy on this one. Thank you, sir. Like working on a swivel joint. But thankfully there's only two fittings. Now I can tighten up those caps. Step one, done. All right, now I've got to put that boom horizontal and I just wish I had something good to support it. You know, remember before when I worked on it, I had logs up underneath it, which worked but it's not the best i'm gonna try something different this time Yeah, that's the real reason I bought that dump truck, because it's the perfect height. Okay, that's BS, but that is a nice coincidence, isn't it? That thing's perfectly horizontal and easily supported by that truck. This is a safety limit switch that will only allow the telescope to extend so far if the axles aren't extended. I need to get this out of the way so it's not damaged when I pull the mid-boom out. All right, there's a lot of wind. I'm gonna try this. I may be doing a voiceover. This is where the extend chain attaches. The chain clevis is right here, and if you look up in there, you can actually see the chain. This is the rod end of the cylinder, and this big block is the eye. It has this pin going through it that will prove to be my nemesis. If you look in here, you can see the rod, so the barrel is on the other side. In other words, the cylinder is extending towards us. And all the hydraulic lines are right under here. 
for right now. Let's get this off of here, get that disconnected, get these disconnected. So there you can really see the rod now. And up in there where it's orange is the mid boom. Well, the mid boom attaches to that cylinder with two pins, one on either side through here that I need to pull out. They're under this plate. So this is kind of funny. This is my slide hammer. And I think that's a 3 8 16 thread, but whatever it is, I think it's gonna work. Oh, that thing's loose. That thread might, look at that. <laughs> well, that was hard. And I just jinxed myself big time. Let's see if this other side's gonna be so nice to me. saying about cooperating nothing so you'll notice there's a gap here and a smaller one there. Well, this is essentially the eye of the rod and the pin is in there. And I wanna know is the pin seized in these outside areas or is it seized in this? I suspect it's more out here because those uh, were in the weather. This has been under that cover the whole time. So this probably didn't get wet, but they did not put a grease circle on this pin because it really doesn't move. What I'm gonna try to do is drive a wedge in here and see if I can get the eye to move over. And if it moves over and this does not move, then I know it is not seized on the inside. And then I can focus my heat here and here and see if I can't win this battle. If I can't get it to move at all, it's probably seized all the way through. I mean, I have really hit it. I have hit it so hard that I'd have to put that on the lathe to clean that up to be able to use it again. There's a chance I'm gonna be drilling this thing out. That'll be fun. I don't think that thing's coming out of there. All right, here's the deal. I have beat on it, I have heated it, I have put penetrating oil on it, beat on it some more. You can see I even dented the pin. It has not budged. 
since I've beat up the other side, the pin would need to go out that way. And I thought about a porta power. I've got a 20 ton porta power, and I could weld on some things and basically do a 20 ton press that way, like I did on the, the pin on this lift um, that I was not able to get out previously. But if you remember, if you guys saw that video, in that one, the reason I couldn't get the pin out is because I couldn't get a good sledgehammer swing at it. The top pin was also seized, but since I could swing the sledge at it, I was able to get it out. Here, I've swung the sledge good and hard plenty of times, and I've got no movement at all. I really don't think 20 tons is gonna do it. I would need a 50 ton press. What I'm getting at is I think that pin needs to go. My options are sawzall and cut it there and cut it there. Then at that point, I can just take the, uh, the cylinder out and then I'll have this little piece to deal with, this little piece to deal with. And with this on the ground, I can then take that out. The thing is, I'll probably need a carbide sawzall blade for that, and I don't have one right now. What I do have is a mag drill and drill bit, so I think that's what I'm gonna start with. I'm gonna try and mag drill this thing, and let's see if I can drill this pin out. Well, I just broke my mag drill. I wish I had had the camera rolling. You know, I think it was my fault, just because there isn't room. The magnet wasn't fully engaged, bit caught, the magnet ripped off, and it spun around, hit this, and just ripped this off of the drill. You might have noticed when I was setting it up, I kept having to move the magnet over because the quill handles were hitting on this support right here. So when I was actually drilling, the magnet is not fully engaged on the steel, and that makes a big difference in its holding power. So apparently I'm not doing any more mag drilling on this thing, <laughs> and I'm not hand drilling it. So saw's all it is. Well, I just finished cutting through that side, and I think it's time to quit for the day. That's the end of day one. If this pin had come out without this huge battle, I think I could have gotten the cylinder out today. I'm pretty sure of it, in fact. But, you know, that's the way things go. So day two is not quite as productive. It rained all night and most of the morning. It's already afternoon, and I've got ponding water here. But it finally stopped, and maybe I can get the other side of this pen cut out. So that pen is now in three pieces. I'm going to have to get all three of those pieces out later, but I can take the cylinder out now. I don't have to worry about scratching this section of the rod because it's fully retracted right now. This rod never goes into the barrel and never contacts the seals.
Now that's a cylinder. Good grief. With the sheave, it's just over 26 feet. Quite a mess. Looks like we've got some bird nestage in there. And this chain, I can see there is a little bit of wear on it, but you can see how rusty it is. It doesn't look bad, but uh, I want to get a look at all of it. So that's the extend chain. It goes over a sheave on the mid boom and then goes up into a block that attaches to the fly boom. And I know it's confusing how all this works together. I'm gonna to make a model so that we understand really how this thing's working. that out of there. Well, there's some movement on that one. So I went up to the shop and I turned down this little pin that will fit in that hole and allow me to really hit it with the sledgehammer without damaging the bushing or anything else. All right, I got one piece out, only two to go. Here I'm gonna to try to drive it out with a piece of one inch solid bar. I have to go from this side because I've mushroomed out the far side of the pin. I know you're stunned to hear this didn't work. All right, here's the plan. I took this and I sanded it down so it should. Yeah, it goes in easily now. Piece of bar of the right size. But yeah, now I can reach straight across. I'll have to come back to that. Right now, we're starting day three and I'm gonna take this cylinder up to the shop. We are almost ready. We're gonna be pulling the mid and the fly boom out together. I gotta to take these wear pads off. There's some on the top, both sides, and the bottom. I'm gonna leave the bottom ones until I get it out. Okay, so here's the plan. I am going to pick the boom up, get the dump truck out of there. The main lift cylinder can easily support everything while I'm doing this. The dump truck I'm gonna use as a catch platform. First thing I'm gonna do, go up there with the tractor. I'm gonna pull that basically about halfway out so that I can then move the dump truck and get it underneath ready to catch.
So I put the boom down so that it was suspended just over the dump truck and started pulling again. It didn't seem to want to come out though. You'll see here that the fly boom starts sliding in the mid boom, which is not what I want. So I chained them together to prevent that from happening. But it still didn't want to come out. Silly me. See that lip on the steel there? It's hitting the wear pads. And I was thinking I could leave them in place and it would just slide off of them, but it won't slide over that. But it will pull the wear pads out if I take these bolts out. So I'm just going to zip those out real quick. But it was still fighting me. So I pushed it back in a little bit and then decided to go check the wear pads again. I got one of them all the way out. The other one was kind of wedged into position, but I could see that it was loose. Certainly shouldn't prevent the boom from coming out. Finally, I decided maybe I was just being a little too gentle with it. Alright, I'm happy with how I have it held, so I start pulling it carefully away from the base boom. The chains are still going through the base boom, so I have to be careful. You don't want to put a lot of sideways pressure on the chains and ruin them. So I get it to a good height and now I need to deal with the chains. This perspective makes it look like it's sitting at an angle, but it's not, it's horizontal. chains are quite a tangled mess. It's a little better. Nothing left in here. Just a long tube. Square tube.
rectangle tube. Shut up. Now I gotta get the fly boom out of the mid boom. First thing I need to do is get to the chain attach block. This is called the retract sheave. The sheave is basically just a pulley that runs on a shaft and it's held in place with two set screws that I'm taking out now. The good news is this pin is greased. So at the risk of jinxing myself, this should be quite a bit easier. Oh yeah. The pin I had so much trouble getting out is not a pin that moves, it's just there to hold the cylinder in place. So they didn't grease it, but then that's what you get. The thing seizes into place and you can't get it out. Like I think good engineering includes making it so that you can work on it. Usually this machine, they do a pretty good job with that. Uh, I like JLG, but I think that was an oversight. I bet you they've changed that in their newer models. There's the sheave, and there's the pin. A little bit of wear on that pin. That's got a little bit of play in it. Hmm. I may look at getting a new bushing. I believe that's just a bushing in there I can press out. A lot of junk in there. That's good. Maybe. The chain attach block. This is where the extend chain and the retract chain meet. The chain has looked pretty good throughout, but I'm not sorry I tore this apart. The cylinder needed to be rebuilt. And not knowing the state of this chain when you're uh, 80 feet up isn't fun in these pins. So we'll get a look at all this. Save those cotter pins, you can reuse those things. I'm just kidding, I'm not gonna reuse those. See, in my mind's eye when I was up 80 feet, this was just a, uh, a pile of rust just about to break, <laughs> sitting right there. But, uh, but of course, it looks pretty good. It looks really good. You hear those geese? Usually, the geese leave in the winter, they go further south, and they never left this year. We've had a, a remarkably mild winter, the, the mildest winter so far that I've, uh, that in my memory. And it doesn't mean it never got cold, that's the thing. Like there were some times when it got down to single digits for a couple of days. The pond froze and the geese were out there standing on the ice. I've never seen that before. But uh, I don't know, somehow those geese knew it was gonna be a mild winter, at least that's what it seems like. Also sounds like a lot of hocus pocus. I don't know, what do you think? Animals seem to know something. Yeah, these pins are actually really expensive. They're stainless, they're heat treated, tempered. This pin I think is like 80 bucks. So yeah, if they look good, I'm gonna reuse them. So this is the end of day three, but I didn't get much done yesterday because of the rain. That's my excuse. No, but really, I could have gotten close to this point if I had had a good full day yesterday, I think. All right, so I have the mid boom chained to my truck, and now I need to pull out the fly boom.
ahead of myself again. I got to uh, take the stupid wear pads out, idiot. All right, this is the retract sheave. This is the one that we just took off that has play in it. And it has two bushings in it, and I can reach through with a punch and drive the bushing out. And there you can see the bushings coming out. Yeah, I had microphone problems, so I'm doing a voiceover. Uh, the problem being some idiot forgot to turn the microphone on. So there one bushing's out, and now for the other side, I can just drop a socket in and drive on that. Makes it a little easier. I probably could have just pressed this all the way through with my shop press, but I wasn't sure if there was a shoulder in there, so I decided to do it this way. And we're ready for some new bushings. The wear pads have pretty good life left in them, but a couple were cracked, so I'm going to replace those. The others I'm going to be reusing. There's the pin that I cut. That's where the drill bit was when the mag drill broke and got this thing that I made to get the other side of it out. Let's put that in there. And let's smack this thing with a sledgehammer and see what happens. Man, that's nuts. All right, I have drilled down to about there. I think I have a plan that hopefully is gonna help me here. I am gonna heat this. I'm just gonna use propane to get it you know, warm. Um, warm, 400 degrees or so, maybe not even that much. I'm not gonna try to get it smoking hot because I don't wanna damage these things. And then I'm gonna take some canned air, I'm gonna invert it, and I'm gonna spray the liquid into the hole to cool the pin. So hopefully I'm gonna do the reverse of a shrink fit and get this thing to move. After letting it and myself cool off for a little while. So the pros would arc lance this thing. That is basically you use a welder's electrical arc and pure oxygen together to just burn right through that pin right down the center in a matter of seconds. Obviously I would have done that a long time ago if I had that ability. I do not so here we go. Can I beat it out now? Nothing. Oh, good grief. That's a one inch hole. And uh, I actually don't have a bit bigger than that. I've had enough of fighting with that. I have an idea that I think is gonna work. But it's going to take some, let's call it maneuvering.
Excuse me. All right, so here's the deal. I lifted it up to the right height with the car lift, obviously. But I propped some things under there just in case anything jumps when I'm pressing this thing out. I don't want it to unexpectedly fall. And obviously this end is supported by the press itself. So now it's got the press, both sides of the car lift, and then a bunch of blocks over there. So that's not going anywhere. Let's push this pin out. I'm curious to see if this is gonna work. Can I just press it out? Because I had full on sledgehammer blows. That was a 16 pound sledge and I would nailed this thing multiple times. I moved it a tiny bit, but I would think that a full on swing with a sledgehammer would be more than 20 tons, but we're about to find out. I think I hear the relief valve. Nice oil's coming out there. Do I just need to tighten that? All right, that's it. Now we will crack out the oxyacetylene. I think I'm gonna put some damp rags over these areas and heat all through here. And hopefully that thing's gonna pop with all that pressure on it. And that's 550 degrees. Won't move. I really thought that was gonna work. All right, now I'm gonna heat right, probably up through, maybe down through the pin, and basically try to make the pin glow red and then I'm gonna dump water down it and temperature shock the heck out of that pin. It moved. Can you guys see anything? Barely. The old temperature shock trick. There it is, finally. Of course that battle's still not over. I still have the other little piece on the side that I cut out. Yay! So just one more thing for me to do to finish this tear down. And that is to get this pin out. And it looks like a bird left a little donation, which I agree with this darn pin. I haven't been going from this side because I've already mushroomed this out. If I then try to drive it through, the part that's mushroomed out is gonna end up hitting 
the bushing in there and I'm gonna grind all that off of there drill it and then hopefully smack that out with a sledgehammer Got my new Evolution mag drill, and on this side, the magnet's gonna have full engagement with the steel. Shouldn't have any problems. Did a nice job. I'm going to heat and I'm going to cut as much as I can without messing up that bushing. So I don't really know the best way to present this. I usually try to present things in a realistic manner, you know, what really happened. And well, it's about to get real. I'm just going to play the unedited footage. I'm spraying the hot bushing with penetrating oil, basically trying to quench it. I would have used water, but we actually don't have water at this building right now. There's a leak in the water line, so this well pump is off. It's right around here I start to hear something. I can't reproduce it with the audio I captured, but something doesn't sound right. It seems like an awful lot of smoke. Oh no. We keep a fire extinguisher just inside the door. I checked it just recently so I know it's charged. It's down underneath the boom in the most inaccessible place there is. I can't even see it. No! 
And the fire extinguisher is not working. So now I'm running to the breaker box to turn the well pump on, which is behind a locked door. And then I'm running around frantically. There's no hoses up here. And all I can find is a bucket. If I don't get this fire out soon, this lift is scrap. And that's assuming it doesn't spread to something else, like my dump truck or the building or who knows what. I still can't even see the fire, I'm just dumping the water in the area that I hear it. Alright, the fire is out as far as I can tell. I've got half a bucket left. I'm going to go get another bucket and have it ready just in case. So let's talk about what happened here. The first time I came out here with a torch to work on this stuck pin, I thought about is there any risk of fire. I considered bringing a welding blanket, but I thought well all I'm going to be doing is heating it and there's just no reason that that would start a fire. So I opted against it and then I kind of got lulled into a sense of security because I had already been out here with a torch before. But once I started cutting, I was throwing slag all over the place and a piece of molten slag fell down right underneath the boom in a very inaccessible area where leaves and oil and grease and stuff collects and it caught fire. This wasn't bad luck. This was 100% my fault. Full. See that? In the green. Not so much. Well, the fire's out. I might as well take out some of my frustration on this stupid pin. The whole eccentric bushing's coming out, so I'm gonna have to replace that. I don't have a lot of experience with fire extinguishers, but the gauge on this thing said that it was full and it didn't work. Kind of interesting because I restored an old copper fire extinguisher that is based on chemistry and though it just shoots out water it wouldn't be good for some types of fires that definitely would work you can look at it and tell is it going to work or not and um, that would have been more use to me than this stupid thing was I'm not sure if it still had pressure in it or if I pressurized it when I smashed it. Either way. Here you can see what's left of the pin still in the bushing. And it pressed right out. So I'm going to give you guys a glimpse of what we were dealing with. This is the center cradle of the machine and the fire was all the way back here in the corner. Now I have the boom up now, so it's much more accessible and easy to see. Um, still impossible to reach or get to, but with the boom down, you couldn't see anything. So in the next video, we're gonna look at the fire damage, figure out what, what's damaged, if it can be fixed, 
and work on that. And I'm also gonna make the model and we'll look at how this three section boom actually functions. I also wanna point out that one of these lines here is the fuel line. The fuel tank's on one side, the engine's on the other, and the fuel line goes right across this cradle. Glad that didn't catch on fire. Yeah, this was definitely the most intimidating repair. It was already rather overwhelming with the way things were going. With that fire, let's just say I could have done without that. But it is what it is. I tried to uh, turn the ignition on and it won't do anything, so I definitely did something to the electrics. And, um, well, I need to get it running, put it through its paces and see what works and see what doesn't, see if any hydraulic hoses bust, and uh, we'll go from there. But for now, I think this video's gotten long enough, and uh, we're gonna have to wait for part two. I need to go clean my undershorts, and we'll see you on the next one. <laughs>